Thank you for staying tuned. I just said goodbye, but welcome again. We continue with part two of this NTN uh, special, interview special with a Senator, the Honorable Fortuna Belrose, Minister with Responsibility for Culture and the Creative Industries. In part one, we did speak on quite a few subjects uh, uh, within her purview, uh, that is Carnival happening next year, uh, also the events that have been scheduled on the roster for this year, how it will pan out, if at all, and also the national cultural policy as a uh, articulated as announced by the Honorable Prime Minister mm -hmm. Alan Shastney in his budget address. Uh, we continue with uh, this interview special uh, speaking on the income support program and Senator Belrose you did speak a little bit of, uh, on it earlier but if you could just go a little bit more in depth in terms of how uh, persons within the cultural industries entertainers stand to benefit from mm -hmm. this income support program uh, due to the effects of COVID-19. Well, yeah, thanks. Um, in fact, w very early when we, when we um, got the nod from the Prime Minister that an effort would be made to support our artists, we were able to communicate with the Cultural Development Foundation, um, who took the lead in terms of mobilizing uh, various persons mm -hmm. um, in, the artistic, in, the, in, in, in the artistic community um, to apply. Um, the critical thing is the, the there is a criteria you know it's not everybody mm -hmm. that will that will benefit um you to to apply it meant that you would have had to show proof um that you were employed and as a result of covid you lost mm -hmm. that employment or that income um once they can satisfy that requirement um they would receive the support as it is now we have a very structured operation you can apply online or you can actually come into the ministry of tourism um, and sit with an agent who would work with you, you understand, to complete the application process okay. or verify that your application is okay, it has met the criteria, you understand, and you're put through, you're put through the system. Um, the payments are supposed to be made from the 17th, um, when is the 17th, Monday? Uh, 17th, that is today. Today, mm -hmm. from today. Well, from today, um, from today, I think the income support will actually be coming through um, to those persons. Um, and um, nice. yeah, we, we're quite happy. I think all the artists, I think there was some level of, um, uh, not resistance, there, there's some apprehension, apprehension. Mm -hmm. yes, about the program um, initially, but I think now it's been beginning to roll out, you know, um, people are coming in, you know, mm -hmm. um, those persons have not applied. Initially, I think up to last week, we only had about, uh, just about 2,000 persons who had applied from the sector. Wow. But I think now, you know, with the advent of the new advertisements, et cetera, for it, and a greater effort to reach those persons on the ground, people are now coming into, in, into the free um, to apply for, for the support. But we encourage the artists to come. We know it's a depressing time for them. Um, and that's just one addition, one means, you know, of getting some support, small measure of support, mm -hmm. $500 per, you know, for the next three months. Um, and so we, we, we just hope that they take advantage of it. It's a small amount, but it's, it's just an amount to show that we care, you know, at this point in time. We are a small society. Um, we do not have gold and, and, and silver, you know, but um, I think from our government perspective, I think we are committed and we're very, you know, empathetic, you know, to, to the plight of the artists at this point in time. Um, and the restrictions are not helping either, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, yeah. in St. Lucia, we, we, St. Lucians are people who love to go out, who love to party, love to fete. Um, and of course, there's always something happening in our country where the artists themselves get a chance to showcase their skills. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are, it's sad that we cannot do this. Um, if we have to do it, it has to be in a very controlled environment. Um, and so as a government, we, we, we understand the plight that they're going through and we will do all we can to continue to support them. In fact, having, having said that though, I think there's some projects that are ongoing in some communities um, in, in Castries East now. We do have the mural being painted by an artist nice. from the community. Um, which will celebrate some of our outstanding citizens um, in that area. Um, and we're looking for ways to engage artists, even from within the creative industries, mm -hmm. to provide that support for them, but at the same time achieving some of the milestones that we want on the ground with respect to our art in public spaces and in the mm -hmm. communities. Okay. Um, on the ground, if you could just give me a sense, because certainly you would be uh, going mm. about getting a, a feel of what's happening in every mm. district, uh, uh, persons who are craft mm. makers, entertainers. Can you just give me a sense of what they're feeling uh, due to COVID-19? The obvious, the, the displacement is obvious. Yeah. Uh, persons working in the hotels and mm. so on. We're just now seeing the reopening of those high-risk sectors. Right. And it's being done incrementally. We're yes. in the pilot phase. Yes. Uh, can you speak to what's happening on the ground, what, the, what their feelings are, their concerns, mm. and uh, how 
is the ministry uh, going to address these as best as possible? Yes. Yeah. Well, 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 I think you, you would have heard the government's stimu um, stimulus package. Mm -hmm. So I think every St. Lucian who is involved in any one of the critical areas mm -hmm. would be able to benefit um, from what is there. Um, the artists, are, yeah, I think a lot of them are de de destabilized mm -hmm. to, to, to some extent, but a lot of them are using that opportunity to produce work. You understand? And so while, while nothing is happening publicly for them, they are actually in production mode and they are doing things to keep themselves occupied. Um, I think for a lot of them with families, the, the, the issue becomes school is coming, school, school sh will should be open and it would require the support. Um, again, the government being visionary um, has taken that into consideration and has provided support mm -hmm. you know, for parents who are taking the children back into school in September. So the support with respect to the school grants, the bursaries, mm -hmm. that is there um, for them. So they just need to apply through the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, you understand, for that assistance. And so that can be given you know, to them to support their children through the school, through the school system. Mm -hmm. um, the government too, with the, with, with, with the stimulus program, has also increased the number of persons who will be receiving support you know, from the, from the Ministry of Equity. Mm -hmm. And so that program is also there for those persons who are really in dire, dire situation. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's just a process of registration and meeting and connecting with those persons in the institutions. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, on the ground, it, it, it's tough for them, mm -hmm. but they are creative people. Um, they know how to survive. And um, yeah, they, 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 they're doing what they have to do. In the, in, in the, in the, the, in the hotel industry, the seven hotels that have hold, uh, opened up now mm -hmm. are also providing opportunities for our artists to perform. So yes. to some extent, the industry is open, um, but of course, in a limited, limited numbers mm -hmm. insofar as artists performing um, at the various hotels. Um, artists, artisans, craft persons mm -hmm. actually vending um, at those institutions. So it is tough. Um, we recognize that it's really sad, mm -hmm. but I think we are working feverishly to ensure that our society opens up incrementally so that more and more of them, you understand, can get the opportunity to go back to work. Um, and so that's why we must adhere to the protocols, you know, and ensure that we do and conform, you know, all of us, you know, to, to the protocols because we want our society to open up. We want our people to get work. We have to live with the COVID virus. And mm -hmm. so it's important for us to do what is right with respect to the management of that process. Um, because at the end of the day, we all have to live it, you know, and, um, and survive in our country. And we want to ensure that we do that with everybody on board with us. After all, we are all in you know this together. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when we come back, I want to speak about uh, how, you know, this whole situation with COVID-19 mm -hmm. has reinforced the importance mm -hmm. of being subscribed to the National Insurance Corporation. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we come back, we talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that, as well as the other uh, plans and work of the Ministry of Culture and Creative mm -hmm. Industries. Stay tuned. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do the that No, they do. think about the children Think about the children yeah. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution Use organic and join Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rye St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. <laughs> but it's not cannibal. It's Thank not you so a, much. It's, it's not a... Thank you so much for staying tuned. We're just having a conversation in between the breaks. <laughs> but um, we continue with this uh, NTN interview special with uh, Senator the Honorable Fortuna Bellrose, Minister with Responsibility for Culture and the Creative Industries. And just rounding off on the whole income support program, mm. if you could reinforce the importance of uh, having um, contributing to the NIC at this time, because certainly the 
uh, the, the monies that they would have been able to get at this time had they been subscribed, those who now have to come to get the income support program, be part of the income support program from the government of St. Lucia, uh, they would be able to uh, benefit more had they been uh, with the NIC. So speak to uh, subscription to the NIC as a way to protect themselves from these shocks such as COVID-19. Yes, and uh, thank you very much for that. I think part of the challenge in our society over the years has been um, the artists themselves never really saw the value you understand, of being part of the NIC or never felt it was necessary or didn't think it was necessary. Um, but the advent of COVID has made us see the light. Yeah, mm -hmm. most persons see the light. And so it's important for them to be documented in the system. The good thing, though, is that the Cultural Development Foundation um, for the last maybe five years or so had been working on a cultural mapping pro pro project. And they were able to, to develop a database over that time with most of the artists, not all, but most of them were in that system. And so it was very easy for us to be able to, to discern from that data in there who the active people were with respect to, um, you know, um, uh, and beneficiaries, mm -hmm. possible benefit or potential benef beneficiaries the from, the, from the income support program, both with the NIC and also with the, 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 those who were not NIC. Mm -hmm. I think what we want as a government is to ensure that everybody is within that one system um, with the national insurance system and hence the reason for us driving home the point that people must register yeah for the income support but part of that is to ensure that they are in the mainstream they come into the full with respect to being a part of the national insurance corporation mm -hmm. um, that is the one pension plan that we have for our country that is what we all should subscribe to um, and of course we know that with the artists they work um, some of them find work sporadically, intermittently, you know, it's not consistent. Mm -hmm. But what we want to do is to encourage them, no matter how small it is, to put something aside for wet days. Mm -hmm. You must always do that. There's always that reserve. You know, I remember as a child growing up in terms of the culture now, you know, our parents teaching us that we must put 10% aside, you know, for wet days. So I, I've never known myself to be broke in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, not that I was rich, but I know that we always had to put 10% away. You know, so if you work for $100, you put $10 away, mm -hmm. you know. And so when the hard time hit, at least now, you know, you have something to fall back on. Mm -hmm. And so that is where we, we need to be. And our artists now, um, part of the training, I think, that has been um, neglected over time is the training of the business of being in the business, Aspect. you understand, mm -hmm. of it. And part of the, 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 the business of being in the business is understanding that you must have savings for wet days. No matter how meager the income is, you must put something away. So when hard times hit, at least you have something to fall back on. And so rather than just the, the, the bunks and draw, you know, and spending wildly, you need to be able to factor and budget your money. And so for us, the whole question of helping build the capacity you know, of, of these artists mm -hmm. um, and working with them to realize their own personal goals, I think that is very, 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 very important. And that's why we want to restructure the Cultural Development Foundation in a way that it continues to focus on that critical area of developing our human beings, you understand, um, in, in, in the arts. Okay, wonderful. Uh, going back to the work of the mm. Ministry uh, for Culture and uh, Creative Industries, I, I know you did speak on music development and the mm. film industry as well. If you could give us some insight as to the work that is ongoing to yeah. bolster these, these sectors. Yes. Um, in the case of the music industry, um, a few years ago, um, well, not a few years ago, I think it was three years ago, um, we undertook a project with the Caribbean Development Bank and the Cultural Development Foundation. Um, and that project, of course, was, you know, part of the project was the development of at least two music studios um, to assist the musicians and the, arti the artists in terms of finding that recording space where they too can go in and produce their, their own music. Um, we're happy to report that the, the, the Grizzly studio is currently being um, finalized. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're also looking at the development of the second studio um, in the Denry community. So hopefully these two would be on stream maybe before, be, before year end. Mm -hmm. um, we're hoping, I, 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 we don't like to put timelines <laughs> on things because you know, within, the, within the system, you know, things take time mm -hmm. you know, to happen. Because for me, this studio should have been there a long time ago, but then again, the processes mm -hmm. involve the location, selection of the location, mm -hmm. making sure you have everything in place, the funding to make sure you deliver it. Mm -hmm. you know, all of the these studio. things mm -hmm. take time, mm -hmm. you know, and so that has been part of the, the, the retardation you know, of, 
of um, of realizing of realizing that particular project. But the the government of Saint Lucia is committed to the music industry. Um, you could see the development of our music over the years, and part of the success that we've had in the carnival mm -hmm. is our music. You mm -hmm. know, um, the way people respond um, to the Denry segment, the calypso, the soca music um, that we produce, and of course we have a number of young upcoming artists. And I didn't even speak about our brand ambassadors. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about the Goodwill ambassadors, mm -hmm. but the brand ambassadors, those young people people who stand out in our society, who get a chance to go out there and represent. And when people see them, they truly reflect who we are, you know, as a people. I think it's something that's, that's another component of the program mm -hmm. um, that we have a lot to talk, you know, we can, we can boast about. Mm -hmm. um, recognizing and acknowledging the significant contribution that these young people are making in our society, um, as well as abroad, you know, to the development of our country. So we've taken that on board. And, you know, in our culture, like I say, people, we always have difficulty acknowledging the success of people inherent in the solution psyche you know we have difficulty acknowledging success but i think with the brand ambassadors program the focus is on trying to ensure brand and goodwill to ensure that we recognize those models you understand and show appreciation for the efforts that they're making as time goes on in the hope you understand that the rest of the society the young ones will see well yeah i can find my place too mm -hmm. in all of what's happening you know, if I do well, the society will acknowledge, you know, and recognize the contribution I'm making. And not that these people are doing it for that. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's the model that you would want as a society to continue to have your people emulate, you know. And so that's, that's, where, that's where we are um, with this particular program. Um, so that was film. music, yes. Oh, with respect to film, yes, we've had some persons who've been working in film here for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the, 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 there's need for us to formalize the industry in St. Lucia. We do have a, a local film association, um, but we're looking to broaden that because we've got through our ambassador program, quite a number of our people are involved in film. We have Joseph Marcel, um, who was on the French Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, mm -hmm. yeah, and also Commissioner Gordon Williams, who is currently very active and involved in film in the, U in the US. Um, and they have committed to working with us to ensuring that we formalize our, our film sector mm -hmm. to ensure that the country continues to benefit. Because too many times we have persons coming in here, filming, taking the best parts of Sinusha to the rest of the globe, and we're not getting anything as a country you know, for it. So I think it's time we capitalize on that. Um, and again, with my government's thrust of trying to ensure that economically, we reap the returns, you understand, for what it is that we can deliver as a people. Um, so that's, that's critical for us. So we're working on that aspect as well. Okay, we are due for another break. When we come back, we speak more on the work of the Ministry of Culture and Creative Industries. But I also want to ask the minister about how she feels, how, how will culture be able to find its way in, t in terms of the tourism industry, how we market St. Lucia going forward. Things will have to be done very differently. So stay tuned for that coming up after this mm -hmm. break. Overnight, growing national a unrest. Society, a digital cashless it's society. Not One world currency. A vaccine which has for COVID-19. Uh, Drop the COVID patient virus. Macy's iconic flagship. Pneumonia. Virus. The coronavirus. Everybody back to the research. If I want to stand up to the lockdown. An infected conspiracy theories. It's a scourge of COVID-19. It's a scourge of COVID-19. From the rest of the world <laughs> and the tiny. In this constantly changing environment, resulting in sensory overload, cut through the noise and tune in to the National Television Network, the official source of information, all facts. Thank you so much for staying tuned. We continue with our interview special, NTN interview special with Senator the Honorable Fortuna Belrose, and she is the Minister with Responsibility for Culture and the Creative Industries. Quite an extensive conversation we've been having mm -hmm. on the work of your mm -hmm. ministry in responding to this next uh, fiscal, dealing with this next fiscal year, um, more specifically the COVID-19 situation, mm -hmm. how many mm -hmm. have been displaced uh, within the uh, culture and creative yeah, industries. Uh, so at this point, uh, uh, I think tourism, uh, many persons were waiting, hoping for the reopening of tourism, uh, the, the, the international flights coming back in. But uh, something very critical to that is now that we have to deal with COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, the world has become even more ferocious in mm -hmm. its marketing, in mm -hmm. its uh, 
in its adv advertising com competition mm -hmm. uh, of the destinations, the, the tourism destinations. And looking at culture, it is definitely something that is going to set us apart from the rest of the world. Absolutely. It is something unique to us. Mm -hmm. uh, can you speak to how we're going to tie in culture to make yeah. us stand out among the rest of the world mm -hmm. um, at this time, dealing with COVID-19 and what have you? Yeah, well, well, I think it was very important for us as a country to ensure that we gave the right impression of our country with respect to the management of COVID. Because across the world, the uh, countries were, are actually being measured by the ability to handle the COVID virus. And I think St. Lucia stands tall in that respect, which added now more global appeal, you understand, to the visitor wanting to come to St. Lucia. So I think we did a good job in terms of projecting our image internationally and protecting our environment um, and keeping it sort of pure, uh, free, you understand, from before COVID. COVID. Yeah, before, before COVID, COVID and even during COVID. I think we've done a great job of uh, maintaining St. Lucia's image, you understand, internationally. So that's why it's very important for us to, to maintain that image. And the way we can maintain that is by adhering to the protocols that have been established. Um, because we've gotten the best advice, we've been able to take the best advice and work with it. And our country has come through um, very tall in, in the whole process. It says a lot about our people. It says a lot about our culture and how we were able to adapt and respond, you understand, to this pandemic. So I think we, we've given a very good impression of ourselves and the, on, the, 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 the onus now is on us to continue to maintain that. Um, when you look at our society, you look at our communities, um, we're now moving into the, the realm of the village tourism. And so when people come to visit now, they'll be visiting and perhaps remaining in domestic in, in spaces. They wouldn't mm -hmm. be, well, as it is now, they're not allowed to go mm -hmm. we're still in the all pilot. around. Mm -hmm. They're still in the pilot stage. Um, but they would stay in the beach, they would stay in the north, they would probably see what's happening in that area. Mm -hmm. um, but the object of the village tourism now is for each of our communities to come out, bring out, and showcase what it is that is unique to them. And people are coming, when they come to your country, they come in for that authentic experience. You know, what it is that is different about you, you know? And I think um, each of our communities, when you look at our con um, communities across St. Lucia, every community is, distinct, is different. If you, you listen to the accents alone mm -hmm. across the country, and the accent from Monrepo is different to one in Denry, and it's different to the one in Castries. So we all have some unique features um, in each of those districts that we need to bring out. And the object of the Village Tourism Program is to bring out that uniqueness, you understand, um, within all of us, all of our districts. Um, and Village Tourism too also allows for the people within the communities to be empowered, to take ownership of the industry within the area, and of course deliver you know, to the visitors who come. And visitors, not necessarily foreigners, but locals too, coming into you know, the various communities to participate in the industry. So I think there's a great opportunity for us to showcase um, and for us to, to, to build on what we had with our industry before COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but COVID has presented an ideal opportunity for us to look deep within, you know, to, to bring out in, in, in a nice, unique way, you know, what is uniquely St. Lucian. You know, and, and I think in, in, in talking to the Prime Minister, he always mentions the thing is, it's not just the authenticity, you know, but it, you, you bring it out with the, 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 the boutique, the chic, you know, the best that you can bring out, you understand, in that community, you know, um, with respect to the product. So it, it, it affords many things. Um, but I think the key was the way we managed the COVID. Managing COVID mm -hmm. internationally the, 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 the has placed your country at a level where people always wanted to come to St. Lucia, now you have more persons mm -hmm. trying to come. And in the midst of COVID, we still have all these thousands of people coming every week, you know? So it says a lot about your country, mm -hmm. you know? If we were in a mess, then people would not be willing to come here. But people are prepared to come, and it says a lot about the way it was managed. We need to continue in that vein, and we need to be our brother's keeper in this. If people are breaking the rules, we need to report them. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong in that, because that's the only way we can continue to maintain a society that is free from COVID. Okay. And also coming out of COVID, we've seen mm -hmm. so much uh, creativity. Yes. Uh, I, I just want to segue into that aspect, yes. uh, creativity with the, the face masks yes. and so yes. on. If you could speak to the potential for that being a new burgeoning industry. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, well not only that, but you see, I'm wearing my little um, buy local. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Because across, across, across our society, 
I think people have recognized the value of investing in things local. And so, you know, there, there's a greater, greater thrust mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to getting involved and um, purchasing and looking for those authentic things, these little things, mm -hmm. you know, that can remind you um, of St. Lucia mm -hmm. and where you are. So the creativity is there. I think what we want, and you would have heard the Prime Minister in the past articulate about the, um, the cashier's market mm -hmm. and the work that happened there and what you would like to see there with respect to the vendors. Mm -hmm. Not all vending the same thing, but vending, you know, real St. Lucian products, you know, and not Chinese products or Taiwanese mm -hmm. products, but St. Lucian products um, that people can be proud you know, to even use at their homes mm -hmm. and keep at their homes and give us souvenirs. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we want to do. And so we need to be able to tap into that. Mm -hmm. We've trained the vendors. We've begun the preparation. We've begun the process. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, we'll realize that outcome. It takes time, you know, because mm -hmm. for us now to have gotten to this point, we need to thank people like the Folk Research Centre mm -hmm. for the work they did, uh, I think, in the 80s, early 80s and early the 70s and 80s, laying the foundation through events like the Creole Heritage um, celebrations, mm -hmm. you know, for people to really appreciate what is theirs. And so we see a manifestation of that now with people really wanting, you mm -hmm. know, um, to, to, to get things local, mm -hmm. to buy local, to think local, to speak local, to engage local, you know, um, it's a big thing. If you can't do it now, you're not in the groove. <laughs> exactly. So people like me who are not fluent in the pathway, I just have to keep quiet, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, as a minister for culture. Mm -hmm. But I think we've gotten to the point where people understand that if you are Lucian, there's some things that you must do, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's where we always wanted to be. So, so it's great that we are getting there. Um, I think now we just, as a people, need to take ownership of what is happening you know, and, and just ride with it and continue to grow and build our country in the way that we ought to build it. And I think there's a wonderful platform. Uh, yeah. We saw a, a high level of patriotism yes. as the world was watching as St. Lucia was doing such a wonderful job Absolutely. in its response to COVID-19. Yes. Now every St. Lucian in every crevice of the world it wants to let the world know that they are, they are St. Lucian. Lucian. That's yes. right, they are St. Lucian. And even for those of us who engage in meetings internationally, you're just proud to give your report on the status of St. Lucia. You understand, when, when, when people are counting. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the death toll in your country? Well, St. Lucia is zero. We are COVID free. You know, it's just nice to say mm -hmm. in an international forum. So it, it left us COVID-19 came, but it left people like me with a very good feeling. Mm -hmm. Good feeling about the potential of our people and what we can do as a country. Mm -hmm. And that is what the culture is really all about. That's what we need to continue to infuse. Mm -hmm. Let us not be negative. You understand? When we see things like that happen, we have to commend it. We have to, we have to congratulate. We have to embrace, you know, as opposed to being disruptive, you know, about it. We can be critical, but I'm saying let us in the main, you know, recognize that this is a great achievement mm -hmm. and continue to support those persons who are pushing that agenda, you know, because it's positive. Absolutely. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for your time. Any final words as we wrap up? Well, I just want to say to the, um, the, the artistic fraternity that we understand the situation. Um, the government is there for you. I think we'll bounce back from this. We will recover. You know, um, all the trends and support systems are there. Our country has done well through COVID. And we're just hoping now that once the economy picks up, that there'll be a boundless, you know, many activities um, that would allow them to be able to regain, you know, and find their way back into the system. In the meantime, there are lots of support systems on the ground. They just need to be able to work with us, you know, and if they have any difficulty, come into our ministry. We are there, we open, you know, come in and have a chat with us and we can work with you, you know, to find your way. Okay, thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. A two-part interview with a Senator, the Honorable Fortuna Bellrose, uh, speaking on her ministry, a ministry, ministry with uh, responsibility for uh, culture and creative industries. Uh, thank you so much for sitting mm -hmm. in with us. We do appreciate it. Uh, getting an update, staying abreast mm -hmm. with the work from your ministry, the plans for the next yeah. fiscal year, as well as the response to COVID-19 mm -hmm. at this time, mm -hmm. uh, uh, considering the income support program and what mm -hmm. have you for our entertainers, our mm -hmm. content creators, our uh, uh, persons who work within the culture cultural industry. So thank you very much once yeah. again. Thank you very much. And with that, we wrap up. My name is Jesse Leons. Thank you so much for watching. Do stay tuned for more NTN programming.